Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Cam, and welcome back to the AFI Project, and today, I suppose I'm talking about Raiders of the Lost Ark? I say suppose because I feel like yet another review of this movie is kinda superfluous, because Raiders of the Lost Ark is universally seen as one of the finest adventure movies ever made, if not the finest. For me personally, it's one of the finest movies ever made, period. I could pretty much just leave leave this video at that. You know, see you in the next one and all that. But I suppose you all want me to talk about it, so I'm going to talk about it. But I'm going to go over this movie cover to cover, and that means spoiler warning. So for all two of you that have never seen this movie, do yourself a favor and go watch it. You will not be sorry. This movie was directed by Steven Spielberg, and in the writer's room was also George Lucas. So not only do we have one of the finest directors who ever lived in the director's chair, but we also have the creator of Star Wars in the writer's room. Yeah, that's what we're dealing with here. Quite seriously though, these two have been friends for pretty much ever, for like the longest time. And one day, George Lucas just casually dropped to Steve, say, hey, I'm working on this script. It's about the adventures of a guy named Indiana Smith. And Steven said, yeah, George, that's great and all, but what about Indiana Jones? And the rest, as they say, is film history. And similar to Star Wars, Indiana Jones is an amalgamation of many of the things that George Lucas loved growing up, specifically two serials, Buck Rogers and Zorro Rides Again. Add some dashes of Alan Ladd and Humphrey Bogart, and, well, you got Indiana Jones. And so I really don't have anything else to say other than let's just talk about the movie itself. And I think that this movie has the greatest opening scene of all time. And this opening scene rocks from everything, from the Paramount logo, which fades into the mountains of the jungle, to the figure of Indiana Jones, though we don't see his face until a beat later, and even down to seeing a young Alfred Molina for the first time. Everything about this scene just sets the tone for everything that we are about to watch. By the way, can we all just take a minute to give a ton of credit to Alfred Molina? I remember watching him just like last year in Promising Young Woman, and seeing him in that and seeing him in this is almost night and day. The dude has range. Like Alfred Molina has got to be in the conversation of among the greatest character actors ever. I don't think that's a blasphemous statement. But Indy's guides soon realize that they are being followed by the Hovitos, and they are not a tribe to mess with. And so one of them is like, better get Indy before he gets us. And so he tries to pull a fast one, pulls out his gun, Indy's one step ahead of him, grabs his whip, gr throws it around, whips the gun out of the handler's hands, falls into the water, and the handler runs off into the forest. And with one musical moment, we see Indy walk into the frame, going, da 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 And even the transition into the dialogue is perfect. This is it. This is where Forrestal cashed in. A friend of yours. A competitor. He was good. He was very, very good. Senor, no one has come out of that alive. Please. I think I could recite this movie from memory, but I'm not going to. And as they're going through this tunnel, Alfred Molina looks like he would rather be anywhere else but there, but Indy's just like, that's oh, kind of dank in here. And th nothing illustrates that more when Indy finds a tarantula on his shoulder and he's like, really gotta call pest control later. But Indy realizes something else is wrong. He motions to Alfred Molina, turns him around, and Alfred Molina's back is covered in tarantulas. And Alfred Molina knows this, and he's just like, God, please. And then he's just like, I can't take you anywhere. As he just brushes off tarantulas. This next scene kind of proves just how, I want to say, stupid Alfred Molina's character is. Because after they jump over a gorge, thanks to, thanks to Indy's whip, they come across the idol room, and Alfred Molina's character's like, there's nothing to fear here, and Indy just grabs him and pulls him off to the side, and Indy's like, that's what I'm afraid of. He grabs a torch, 
finds this little oblong looking spot on the ground, puts the torch down, applies some weight, and boom, poison dart. Indy maneuvers around all of the stones, there's too many of them, and then he comes across the idol. And this scene is just done brilliantly, where he just sits there and he leans in and he's like, how am I going to do this? And then, and then he's like, okay, bag of sand. And so he grabs the sand, opens it, takes some out, does a little mental math, and then as the music is building up, you see Alfred Molina doing this, and Indy's like, okay, here goes nothing. And as the music is building, it's like, da-da, 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 da-da. And then as Indy makes the switch, the music goes, da. And there's a beat where you're just like, he did it. And then all hell breaks loose. The tunnel starts collapsing. It's every man for himself. Alfred Molina gets across the gorge first, and Indy's like, give me the whip, give me the whip. And Alfred Molina's like, throw me the idol. We don't have time to argue. Indy throws him the idol, and he doesn't throw, and Alfred Molina doesn't throw the whip back. And he's like, adios, senor. And I'm like, wow, Indy, you really got played. But Indy jumps across just barely, grabs his hat on the way out. That's a nice touch. And then he turns around, and the mother of all boulders is coming down the pike to run him over. And just, Indy's run is just perfect out of here. He's trying, it, it's not elegant, it's not Usain Bolt, it's just a death run just out of this place. And he makes it, only to be covered in all of the cobwebs, and then soon afterwards, he ends up in the captivity of the Hovitos. Oh, and I almost forgot, there was a scene earlier where Indy finds Forrestal, but he's not much of Forrestal anymore. And that same fate happens to poor Alfred Molina. But then we see our main antagonist for the movie in Belloc, played brilliantly by Paul Freeman. Dr. Jones, once again you have proven that there is nothing that you can take which will soon fall into my possession. And Indy tries to pull a fast one, but the Hovitos don't look the brightest, but they know a gun when they see one. And so Indy's just like, fine, here. And then, and then Indy's like, too bad the Hovitos don't know you like I do, Belloc. And then Belloc says, Too bad you don't speak Hovitos. Kabuta kabasa! Obata! And then he's like, Oh, you guys look like you're praying. Uh, I'm out of here. And Belloc does this little thing where it's like, or something like that. And then he does the super evil villain laugh, which is great. And then Indy is running across, being chased by hundreds of Hovitos. And this next sequence is just so funny to me because it's just like, Indy's running for his life and he's got this pilot named Jock and he's just chilling trying to catch a couple fish. And Indy's like, Jock, start the plane, start the plane. And then Jock looks up and he's like, oh crap. He throws the pole in the water Then he gets up and he starts the plane. Indy jumps into the water just barely. The Hovitos are shooting stuff at him and Indy just barely makes it onto the plane as it takes off. And then literally in the next scene, Indy thinks he can relax, and then all of a sudden, there's a snake where he's supposed to be. THERE'S A BIG SNAKE IN THE PLANE, JOCK! YEAH, I KNOW, THAT'S MY PET SNAKE, REGGIE! I HATE SNAKES, JOCK! I HATE THEM! OH, COME ON, SHOW A LITTLE BACKBONE, WILL YA? That first third is so excellent. It should be studied, like in film schools. If it's not on, like, every film school's curriculum, just fail. Just fail all around. We then cut to see Indiana Jones, well, as Dr. Henry Jones Jr. He is a professor in, as, as his day job because, you know, archaeology doesn't pay the bills. And then we also meet Marcus Brody, played brilliantly by Denel Melliott. Even though they're kind of in a boss-employee kind of thing, they still are really good friends. The movie does a good job of showing their relationship. And then they both learn that the FBI wants to talk to Indy. And he's like, what, am I in trouble for something? Because, I mean, when you grave rob, it's got to bring up some attention. And then we cut to our two FBI agents. One of them was Porkins from Star Wars. And I gotta be honest, I think this is one of the greatest exposition scenes in movie history because it outlines literally everything that you need to know from here on through the rest of the movie. What Indy's going to be going after, who he's going to be traveling with, 
who the enemy is, ditto ditto, etc, etc. If you need something covered, it is covered in this scene. We learn of Indy's relationship with Abner Ravenwood and how it fell through, and that having a lot to do with his daughter Marion, more on her in a second. We also learn that the Nazis are courting Abner Ravenwood because he has a headpiece that is very important to finding the Ark of the Covenant. And seeing Indy mark out for just the Ark of the Covenant, he's like, Marcus, they found the Well of the Souls. And the FBI agents are going like, uh, excuse me, what? And then Indy's like, Well of the Souls is basically a place that could lead to the Ark of the Covenant. It's where the Ten Commandments were held. And then Indy goes on this long tangent about how you need a, you need a staff about a certain length, a certain headpiece with certain markings on the back, and then he draws it out on this chalkboard, and then he ends that with, didn't you guys go to Sunday school? FBI guys are like, we clearly got the right people for this. And Indy's like, it's just theories, really. And then the scene kind of ends with Indy showing them pictures of what the Ark might look like. And the FBI agents are like, oh, what is this? And Indy's like, thunder, lightning, wrath of God, who knows? The movie does a good job of showing that Indy may have once been a believer in God, but through a series of events has not really been a big fan of God lately. I could be looking too deep into it, but that's what I got out of it. And then the next scene we learn that the FBI has told Indy, hey, you're good to go on this. And Marcus kind of gives him a warning. He's like, the Ark has been looked at, has been searched over for 5,000 years. Maybe man wasn't meant to find it. And then he's like, oh, Marcus, what do you think? I'm, I'm, you're, you're talking like my mother. Like, I know what I'm supposed to do here. Like, Indy's just writing this whole thing off. Like, this is going to be easy street. Spoiler alert, it's not. But to his credit, though, he does follow that whole thing up with, oh, you know how much of a cautious guy I am, as he throws a gun into his suitcase. And then we are off to Nepal where we meet Marion Ravenwood, played brilliantly by Karen Allen. I definitely noticed the Casablanca influence in this subsequent rewatch, because as I was watching the scene where Indy enters the bar, it's kind of, I don't want to say a mimicry, but yeah, it's a mimicry of when Ingrid Bergman enters, the bar, enters uh, Humphrey Bogart's bar. And in this little beat... You can tell that these two were once friends, but not very much anymore. Like, she straight punches him in the face. Like, it, it's brutal. And we later learn that Marion is pretty much stuck in Nepal and is trying to buy her way out through drinking contests. Because, hey, she works hard for her money, so you better treat her right. And then Indy's like, Marion, I just need the piece. It's worthless. I just need that, and I will be gone. And Marion's like, come back tomorrow. And he's like... Why? And she's like, because I told you so. Good stuff. And Indy leaves. But not long afterwards, Marion is confronted by Tote and his goons. Good evening, Fräulein. And I love her line that she follows up with, Bar's closed. And Tote, Tote kind of looks like a Nazi. Like, if you were to close your eyes and picture a Nazi, maybe like, other than Hitler or Goebbels, like, you would probably picture this dude. And it's a pretty intense scene, too, where the goons just grab Marion, Tote takes this hot poker out, kind of looks at it, and he is like, you're going to give us what you want. And she's like, yes, yes, I will, yes, I will. And, and he's like, I know you will. And then all we hear is a whip and, and a crack, and the poker is away, and Indy's there with his gun, and he's like, let her go. And this fight is just brilliant. It is brutal stuff. Indy gets his butt kicked. Like, he gets thrown around the bar, he gets stuff broken over him. He dishes it right back in spades, but I mean, Indiana Jones is, one of, is just one of the best heroes of all time. Because he's just beatable enough to where people are like, easy work. But at the end of the day, he's also he can also more than hold his own, as proof in later scenes, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. While all this chaos is happening, Tote gets the bright idea of, oh, hey, there it is, while this medallion is piping hot. And he's like, ah! And he runs out and 
this is like the funniest thing. Like just he, he runs on. He's like ah, ooh, 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 and he sticks his hand in the snow. I don't know why this is so funny. It just is. And as the bar is burning down, Marion grabs the medallion with a rag. Smart woman. And and Indy and Marion are like, yeah, well, you're something. And Marion is just straight up like, yeah, I'm your partner. You owe me a bar. And then we travel to a much warmer place in the form of Cairo, Egypt. And while we're there, we also meet Sala, played by John Rhys Davies. Cairo, city of the living. And in this meeting, we get another person in this movie telling Indiana Jones there's something about the Ark that just doesn't seem right. And then he just like, whatever, as long as I'm paid. And we later learn that the Nazis got there first, and they are digging viciously for this, for this Well of the Souls. And we later learn that Belloc is leading the project. The movie also does a good job of not turning Belloc into a full-blown Nazi. Like, he just still is like, they're paying me to do this, so, you know, it's a check. Let's do it. Also, we see through Indy and Marion, we see a little bit of their relationship as well through this, through these dialogue scenes in the market. I love these scenes. I love that the movie takes a minute to just, like, kind of sit and just let things breathe a little. I like that. I like the spirit of that. But it does not last long, as soon they are attacked, and this fight is just insane. It goes everywhere, as Indy's trying to find Marion, who gets stuffed into this basket, and and at a certain point, you think, oh, she can hold her own. She knocks a guy out with a cast iron frying pan. Sheesh, that had to hurt. And she eventually just gets apprehended and stuffed in a basket, and, and she's like, Indiana Jones, get me out of here! And then, I, I love this part, when Indy is chasing this one basket, and then it gets into a whole room of baskets, or I guess an alcove of baskets, and he's just like, well, let's get started, and he gets, starts pulling down baskets, and the people are just like, hey, that's my laundry, what the hell? And then after all of that, we get to that scene. Which scene, I hear you ask? The swordsman scene. Allegedly, this scene was supposed to be far more complex, with a big fight between Indiana Jones and this swordsman, with Indy eventually going out on top. However, the production didn't count on one thing. Hen Harrison Ford getting food poisoning. And so, he's just like, look, I'm really not into this, Steve. Can I please just shoot the guy? And, well, Steve and everyone else were just as sick as him, so they are like, yeah, just shoot him. I really don't know what this fight would have looked like. I've seen still images, but never really anything specific. But it was a better payoff when he, when, when this guy does his, does his crap, you know, with the sword back and forth and twirling it and all that. And then he's just like, got time for this. Bang. And then Marion gets shoved into this truck and is about to drive away when Indy's like, not on my watch, shoots the truck, the truck turns over, and it explodes, seemingly killing Marion. And Indy takes it about as well as you can expect, as he is next, drinking his troubles away. Only to be shown to Belloc again. And Belloc is like, I see you've made a good choice in friends yet again. And while Belloc is talking about it's not what you know, it's who you know, Indy follows that up with, why don't you try the local sewer? And then Belloc drops this little line of, you see this watch? I bought it at a vendor for $10. It's worthless. If I go bury it in the desert in a thousand years, it becomes priceless. I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> but then Belloc, this is the third person who has done this to Indy, basically says that the Ark of the Covenant is a radio to God, a way to speak to God. And Indy is just tired of all this. He just says, You want to talk to God, Belloc? Let's see him together. I got nothing better to do. He tries to pull a quick draw, but then Sala interrupts him with his millions of kids, seemingly. And they're like, Indy, 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 Indy! And they drag him out of the bar, and Belloc's like, Next time! And, and, and Indy's like, Sheesh, saved by some kids. Next scene, we cut to Indy and Sala getting the headpiece, uh, getting the headpiece examined. And, well, to make a long story short, they soon find out that the Nazis are digging in the wrong place. This is a very Hitchcock-level scene where we know what's happening, but, they, but the characters don't, and so we're ahead of them. But when they do realize it, the payoff is just incredibly satisfying. 
Then, then with the knowledge of where the well is, Sala, Indy, and their team go out and they dig until they find a big old slab. Under this slab is the Well of the Souls, and in the Well of the Souls are snakes. And I love Indy's line here where he's just like, Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Then Sala follows that up with, Asps. Very dangerous. You go first. Bonds of friendship are strong with this one there, Gimli. While all of this is going down, Marion is not dead, for she is surely alive, and, well, in the custody of Belloc. And as she tr and she tries to escape, and, and he says, Run if you'd like, it's three weeks to the nearest town in every direction. And so she's like, Alright, I'll eat. And the two actually get along for a while, and they even have a bit of a drinking contest. You think, ah, oh, Marion's got this in the bag. And then we later learn that what they're drinking is Belloc's family's very own private label that he's been drinking for his entire life. She realizes this and is about to do something only for Tote to show up and she's like, Good evening again, Fräulein. Not that line, but I'm sure you all get it. And, well, all of that is happening, Indy is in the Well of the Souls, and... After nearly coming face to face with the fangs of a king cobra, he finds the Ark, and Sala and him lift the Ark up and eventually get him out of the thing. And then, the, once the Ark is out, the rope goes limp and falls in. And, and, and he's like, uh, Sala, remember what you did last time? Part that I missed. In an earlier scene after the headpiece is examined, Indy goes. Indy and Sala go to this separate cave where they will find the location of the Well of the Souls, and this whole scene is just beautiful. The special effects don't look terribly good by 2021 standards, but I'm sure in 1981 it looked amazing. Nearly forgot to talk about that scene, and I do apologize. And as the rope goes limp, you see Belloc with a shitty grin, going, "Hello." Hello! And Belloc puts the slab over the Well of the Souls only before ma throwing Marion down there too. And in a great bit of editing, Marion like screams at the, like the very last minute, so she's like, "No!" Nah! And as the slab is coming over, it cuts off. So it's like, "No!" Nah! So now they got to deal with the snakes, and it is not fun. And, well, Indy eventually gets the idea of knocking one of the big statues over, causing a hole in the wall, and they escape through that. But not before. Let's just say Marion encounters some extras from Night of the Living Dead. And then we get to the plane fight. And, yeah, this, this scene is just great. Remember what I said earlier about how Indy got his butt kicked in the bar in Nepal? He gets it even worse at the hands of this mechanic who I swear is like Andre the Giant size. He gets in a lot of good shots, but the only reason it Indy wins is because, well, I don't care how big or strong you are, you're not surviving against a propeller. Especially going at that speed. And Marion gets stuck in one of the gun turrets and Indy has to save her, and as they're running away, the plane explodes. Just a little before this plane scene happened, one of the Nazi stooges, Dietrich, is, is having a glass of whiskey and he's like, To our success in the desert, to Belloc, and Belloc is like, When we are very far from here. Say what you want about Belloc, but he knows the rule to not start cheering too soon. And then, after the plane explodes, Indy is like, Sala, we're alive. And then Sala, who's just the best, he's just like, Indy, my friends, I'm so happy you are not dead! And then Sala tells Indy that they're loading the Ark onto a truck for Cairo. And then, and then Indy's like, what truck? And then we get to the truck chase, and this scene is just incredible. I hope the stuntman for this movie, or the stunt team, were given hefty raises for the amount of crap that they had to go through on this. Because one of them gets has, has to be dragged behind this truck, and that could not have been easy. At all. And Indy takes a pounding here, too. He gets shot in the arm by some dude. He gets beat up by one of the Nazi generals and thrown out the window of a moving truck. Like, it's just, it's brutal stuff. For a movie that's rated PG, this movie has, it is quite barbaric, and it's about to get a lot worse. And after recovering the arc, uh... 
Indy and Marion are like, all right, we got it. We're going home. We're out of here. And this scene where Indy and Marion actually have some quiet time together is actually one of my favorite scenes in the movie because it's not just an, oh, I love you kind of thing. But they actually, like I said, they do have a fair bit of chemistry with each other. There is tension, but it subsides after a while, but not before Indy just pretty much getting super kicked by a mirror. And then we actually see, like, Indy being like, oh, God, I'm sore. And Marion is like, are you really in that level of pain? And, and he's like, it's not the years, it's the mileage. Marion tries to help him and everything hurts. And she's like, well, God damn it, Jones, where doesn't it hurt? And, and he does the game of he's like, here doesn't hurt, she kisses that. Here doesn't hurt, she kisses that. And he's like, here doesn't hurt. And she kisses there, and he's like, here doesn't hurt. And then they kiss, and it's great. You would think they're in the clear, but oh no, the Nazis have found them, and they have taken the Ark. And, and after they take the Ark away in a submarine, Indy follows them, because of course he does, and they get to this island. And in another really funny movie, after Indy gets onto the Nazi base, I guess, he finds one, he knocks out a Nazi, finds one of their uniforms, and he tries to put it on, and it doesn't fit him. And he's like, oh crap, a million Nazis in the world, I think I'll find one smaller than my sister. And then this German officer is like, hey, what are you doing? You're a, you're a mess, like, put that thing on, like, comb your hair, like, what are you doing? You're not a good soldier, and, and Indy just gets tired of it after a while and just punches him in the face. I half expected him to be, like, boring conversation anyway. And then the big march begins to where they're going, where the Nazis are going to open the Ark. And after Indy finds a rocket launcher and he's like, Hello? He tells Belloc he's gonna blow it up, and then Belloc's like, Wait a minute. You want the same thing as I do. You want to see this Ark open just as much as I do. So put that thing down, and let's meet God together. And Indy's like, I'm here, I might as well. But now Indy and Marion are tied up, and the ceremony is now beginning. And Belloc says a prayer, the lid gets taken off, he kind of puts his hand in there, and it's sand. And Toad is like, all this work for that. And, well, that's not all, folks. All these spirits, seemingly, start going around everywhere, every all of these, like, the Nazis, some are even lifted off the ground at some point, and then the music in this is just incredible. It starts, the spirit comes to Belloc's face, it's a beautiful woman, it looks like, and then, in a beautiful sound, song transition, it goes, da 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 and Dietrich, Belloc, and Tote just all collectively scream their heads off. While all this is going down, Indy and Marion are tied together, and, Indy, and Indy's like, Marion, close your eyes. Do not open them. Keep your eyes shut. And Marion's like, okay, but what? And he's like, just do it! In that one moment, Indy became a believer again. And the deaths of Dietrich, Belloc, and Tote are still brutal to this very day. Like, Dietrich gets his head squished in, Tote melts like a candle, and Belloc's head just straight explodes. He had to put a column of fire over it because, you know, rating system, but it's still brutal nonetheless. And all their souls are taken somewhere other than heaven, I hope. And the lid gets thrown back onto the Ark. And Indy and Marion are just like, what the hell was that? And then the last couple scenes in the movie are are where Indy, or Indy and Marcus are meeting with the FBI guys again, and Indy's like, yeah, the pay's good and all, but where's the Ark, seriously? And the FBI guys are like, it's being taken for research. And Marcus is like, this is a very significant artifact. And, and the guys are like, we are, have taken that under advisement, Dr. Brody, and it will be looked after by top men. And Indy's like, who? And then the guy's like, top men. And then Indy says, who? And the guy says, top men. Next scene after, Indy's walking out of there like fools, bureaucratic fools. Feel you there.
But hey, at least he gets the girl in the end and ain't nothing wrong with that. And then the Ark is put away in Area 51, never to be seen again until that one Indiana Jones movie that no one likes to talk about. I feel like I've been talking quite a while, but I mean, what can I say about this movie that hasn't been said by people far more important than I am? It's the greatest adventure movie ever made. The acting is on point. The action is stellar. The special effects largely still hold up to this day. The stunt work is incredible. This is John Williams' very best scores. Yes, I know what I said. This is Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, Harrison Ford, and everyone else at the very height of their powers. This was, this was Steven Spielberg at the peak of his powers. George Lucas had just gotten done writing for The Empire Strikes Back, if my, history, if my memory of history serves me right. While all of these men would go on to do great things after this, I think that in many ways, nothing could ever top their work on Raiders. So if you're watching this, I have a feeling you all have seen Raiders before. So what is your favorite Raiders moment? Leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And that is all for me, guys. Thank you so much as always for watching. Next time on the AFI Project, we're going from a loud, bombastic adventure movie to a very quiet movie about a marriage imploding. It's Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. But if you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, and if you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to allow notifications. That way, when a new video drops, you'll be the first to know about it. My name is Ryan Cam. I'll see you in the next one.